Uh, what me and Derek came up about this morning was we never had settled on the price, the price of our loader to, to the solid waste. Um, we just want to make sure everything's right with you. We, we had talked about $61,000, but uh, there's some information on some newsletters that I found on the internet. And just make sure that this is okay with you guys. And, There was just keep everything above board. Because our load, the new load is supposed to be here at the end of the week. The load that Darren's getting is already, we've already taken it down to Clark City and it's everything, put in the tires, and basically all we got to do is get it right out to you. And you trade the load he had. Yeah. Yes, and it was worth the uh, trade-in value when it was $21,000, so that would be him and the other department $40,000, if that's acceptable. Yeah. 20 for this year, 20 next year. Okay. <coughs> Sell the county loader to the landfill for $61,000. Is there a second? Second. Move to the second, all pairs out. All right. All right. All right. This is the lease purchase from the first bank. The new loader? Yeah, first bank of Sterling. The interest rate was four nine five. I don't think the date on was the 31st. You got some other bids in for leases in there? Um, but the other one that I, that I had was through Komatsu, was 5%. And that was what I had. That was only the one I had in my house to really do these purchase. And then Lisa said next time I do this, there's a possibility to do this. Turn one thing that right, Lisa? Pardon? I, I, I was telling them the next time we did this, there's a possibility we could do this internally. Oh, um, yeah. Which I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, she brought it up one day. But really, <laughs> come pay yourself for me. Accept this um, lease agreement with First Bank of Sterling. Second. Who's in second? All favor say aye. Looks like we all have to sign it. Several places. Several places. Principal driver on that. Um, Brian Kermer. This is our driver. Got treated off. So we tried to get guys in the yeah. same trucks. So I'm not so sure. So we don't have any controversy on who bent what or <coughs> run well, what. Or I mean, sometimes <coughs> it's a bad yeah. way. But it, it, it just makes it quicker, less longer, you know. Trading around every day. Yeah, everybody knows their own truck and how to run. So yeah. they can tell me if it goes wrong with them. I agree with that. 
<laughs> then I had a, a guy from Stanley Dirt up in Elmwood. He was wanting some material we have out here at Fisher Pit. We dug our roads. It's old asphalt and clay a lot. That's what we do after we dug it out of the road and haul it out here. Mm -hmm. Well, he was wanting to trade a load of sand for two loads of dirt. If that's acceptable to you guys, but I, that's it should be two to two to three is in my opinion. Not to my guys. Do we have any stories with the townships we, or anything? We, yeah, we do. I mean, I mean townships are locally have any stories. We sell some townships for five dollars a ton. There's probably two to three thousand tons of dirt, yards of dirt. Out there. There's pretty good piles. So you must give you one little sample, two loads of that. Yeah, but uh, I got to think around. It needs to be two, two to three, or one and a half to one. As long as we're not short of townships. Yeah, that's no. Well, um, we have. I mean, they. We dug a lot of stuff out of here in the middle of the road. We hauled a lot of stuff out of the township, which is Douglas. And he's used a lot of the, the feet on the track out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we had some of those roads out there. We liked it a little bit. But then no, no. that way we didn't have to haul it to town. We had a little bit of trucks right there. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way for us to get rid of it. And that way, we weren't charging them they made anything we were going to do. But you're talking about how, how many loads? He didn't. He didn't really say, and I guess I can get back with him and see how much he's really wanted. He really didn't, didn't say how many loads that he was wanting because he had got some dirt up here when dug some holes along the K19 extension, and he wanted. He saw the guys up there. And he said, "Well, can I have that?" And he said, "Well, get right with it." And that's fine. That's, it, we're going to have to go pick it up if he doesn't. If somebody doesn't, so. So he thought, well, maybe I could, and he come down so us. He could do that. I think maybe I'll find out how much it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just going to be a load or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you got to talk around the county. He was talking probably about a thousand times. But I mean, this pile, the pile we have out there, I mean, it grows and it gets there and it grows, but I don't know that it's ever probably one hundred or a thousand tons or a thousand yards. I mean, that's pretty hot and stuff. But we use it for entrances and then some of these blowouts and some of these things. So, uh, August. so how much is sand at time? <coughs> oh, growth sand's running probably around five dollars a ton. So it's equal. You, you were selling the the That's road material for five dollars a ton. When we, yeah, when we've been hauling for townships, some some of the townships since we've been. That's what we've been trying. That's five dollars a ton. So maybe more. Well, so, I would say. I mean. Yeah. You could do well, a round yeah. trip. I mean, you could bring down a load, take a load back. I mean, yeah. how are you going to work two to three or one to two? or? Yeah. Well, one to one, yeah. So, like one to one. Okay. I'll get back with them. Probably that's what you need to. Yeah, make sure you're short of the people. Okay. <laughs> well, so far, it hasn't been. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, that's all See, that, that way you'd make a full load all both times. Yeah. Ceiling sand or something. <clears throat> yeah. Our ceiling sand is pretty close to the building. There's a couple of different pits. Now you get some of the other, you get to some of the other pits and it's got some two big play balls in them. Yeah. Two big balls. Like they need the egg rock in it. That's, that doesn't work very well with two of those spray red box. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry's supposed to be here that night. So. All right. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Well, you come down here and look like that. Yes, that's important. The multitask? Do you mean a cell phone? I, I, yeah, no, I brought down my paper monster yeah. here. So much for the idea of the paperless office. Uh, Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? I've come down this morning. I want to uh, appoint LaDonna, the motor vehicle supervisor, now that um, Donita is retired. Um, LaDonna's 
kind of just taking the ball and ran, and she's doing awesome. So she fit well by the end. So I would recommend that we give her the motor vehicle supervisor position. We haven't been paying as much, have we? No, it's going to be an increase from seventy-five to one hundred and fifty. Well, it used to be fifty dollars for that. Maybe so a long road. Yeah, that's right, yeah. See, but it wasn't, it wasn't ever on, on, it never, it come on the cost of living thing. That's what I could have said. Well, I worked up to this because it's just the cost of living brought up to $73, I think. Yeah, it's weird. Because the dollar is just a flat fee, just a stipend for just for doing it. Yeah, um, well, um, I don't know. It's just a flat fee and not. not, not Entitled to the cost of living, it's just, just like you pay someone. We've so always given it cost of living. Mm -hmm. well, it started in some way, but it used to be a long, long time ago. I I'd look back because I didn't know the first year I did salaries, and really? it's, it's always. Uh, yeah. It's always been high. It's always gotten the three or five, whatever yeah. cost, of cost of living. All of the supervisors had the road supervisors, the, you know, the bridge and mm -hmm. the patching and all that. We just always have. So, see it jump that if you want it changed, we need to know on the supervisor thing. We can talk about that later. Yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. Well, she's taken a lot of the stress off of, of, of what? Off of me and doing, like I said, a really good job. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah. And I really am thinking if she, if she continues to do well, I want to raise, raise this like comparable to like what Roman Bridge gets for their supervisor. But I thought we'll start at this and we can always go up. So does this change her range and step? Or? No, it has nothing to do with that. It's just it an extra compensation. And this comes out of my motor vehicle fund. It doesn't come out of counting budget money, so it's not going to affect anybody's budgets. It, it comes out of the motor vehicle. But usually, where did this $70 come from? That's what it's been in the past. That, that's where Donita left off, but with LaDonna, I want to raise it to 150. So she's doing more work than than um, Donita, or? Can I call an executive session? Sure. I rec. Uh, How long? How long? Ten minutes. I make a rec. Uh, I move that we go into executive sessions too. It, Discuss non elected personnel for 10 minutes. Second. Move to second. I'll never say out. We're in executive session. I won't buy it. I won't buy it. I won't buy it. I won't buy it. I'll make a motion. We'll go ahead and increase um, Don, uh, LaDonna's uh, compensation for the motor vehicle supervisor to $150. Is there a second? Second. Second, I'll never say aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Are you the general fund or the tag fund? Uh, uh, you might want to note that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do I need it? Okay. Matter that? How are you, dude? Um, never perfect, I guess. Back again? Here, we'll even get the chair. Oh, that's all right. Up over here, take the hot seat. Yeah. Good. Solve all your problems. Good. Which one did you want to start? Uh, <laughs> do you have all day? I did call Mike and tell him about Terry and Peter. I didn't. I ended up leaving a message on his voicemail. So. So we're we gonna wait till nine then. Well, while we're waiting. I'll tell you, gentlemen, that last week I was in a different location, but I was meeting with Mike Selm of Canada Department of Health and Environment. Uh, we 
we were looking at another land, uh, landfill. And he is getting ready to come inspect your landfill and indicated to me that he probably is going to find a few things that you need to correct. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I'm not sure. I, I need to double check with your landfill operator. But basically what they're wanting, and they may have this, I don't know. Uh, they will need a certificate of title, or, or if you've got, do you own that property or do you lease it? No, we don't own that. Then they need a copy of the deed. And they need the corners all staked out and monumented at the landfill. I think that's been it should, that survey, yeah. We'll and then they need, uh, they've got, they're trying to bring all the landfills up to where they're all actually using the same format so it makes their filing easier is basically what it is. So they've got a new, well it's not completely new, but uh, the site plan that they want for the landfill. They want it updated if it hasn't been updated within the last two years and I'm not sure where you're at on that. So I'll get with your landfill operator and with Mr. Sell and I'll see what needs to be done. But I just kind of give them a heads up. They may decide that you need to spend money. So I, you're I saying they're going to find something spend. wrong no matter what? I, I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's almost more of a make work project <laughs> for, for people in Topeka. Yeah. 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 Stafford County oil every 30 days. We have know. a C and D landfill, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we're not ambitious. We're not going to go further. No. We'll be okay. We decide to get something wrong. No, it's only when you get more ambitious in a C and D landfill do you find yourself discussing landfills at county commission meetings on a regular basis. We've been pretty, pretty fortunate. I mean, really, we've been pretty well. Had, had too many complaints out there all the time since no. we've had the, had the right kind of feel on it, the grass and cover. Yeah. The biggest thing is whoever is on duty out there, they need to look for out of you know people who claim to be Stafford County residents. You know, they've never seen these people before, and they got this big truck. That's what you got to look. I don't. I think they probably do it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Darren does. <laughs> he knows who comes in and out of. That's the key. And what they put in as far as their C and D too, the, the, like the sheet, like had the roofers. I think one time had all their condo tubes, their coffee cups, and their pop bottles and everything. You had to pick that up. And, uh, they were pretty good shape on that. Yeah, I think he's pretty much got a stop put to that. So. Depends on what crew comes in for who. <clears throat> well, it's nine o'clock. I guess we can go ahead. And Real, real quick, this is just for Commissioner Kermit. It's one of the local low goods over in Stafford. In case anybody asks, how come I'm being nice to him? Only keeping him in jail until January 9, 2009. <laughs> the, the, the short answer is at you know, $45 a day times $365 a day. I, I try and keep that, you know, mm -hmm. as a break and urge to incarcerate people. You recognize the name, which is somehow I don't think he's worth expending sixteen thousand dollars on to keep him incarcerated for a full year. If this you know, kind of a judgment on my part, I think you like I said recognize the yeah. name. I'm kind of hoping they'll take the hint and leave. But <laughs> how do you guys be here? Pardon? How do you guys feed here? Uh, we, we really don't. We don't. don't. I've been trying to find a <laughs> Three squares. for me good and kind of work that into my retirement. Right. Martin <laughs> County, <laughs> much nicer than Pratt, Pratt County. I mean, if, if you're to believe the defendants, <laughs> it's like, gee, Judge, can, can you can you order that I go to Barton County? <laughs> That's what I hear all the time. So I'm assuming. Well, the thing well, is, I think when they when they're first put in jail, they should be weighed. <laughs> when, they, when they leave, they should weigh them again. Charge them so much better. <laughs> Charge them so much Because the Pratt County Jail seems to get their attention more so. That's just one man's perception. I'm going to go bother the magistrate judge, but I'll be here for 
Give a shout if you need one. Okay. Okay. Oh, a paper monster. I'm going to bother Sheriff Jeff again. Okay. Well, if I don't see anybody before election, good luck to our two candidates. All right, thank you. Enjoy working with you. You do. Well, I'm enjoying this year. I'm unopposed everywhere. There you go. I'll tell you what, I'm just watching people vote in Ellsworth County because the early voting's in the county clerk's office and I'm always there with her trying to figure out various and sundry things. A lot of heavy uh, turnout for early voting and a lot of upset voters. You can hear them mumble when they're over at the booth. I mean, see, she's been county clerk there for like 24 years and this will be my fifth term there. And so we got pretty good antennae. And we're like, boy, we're glad we're unopposed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my understanding that you have some disgruntled property owners and or township trustees and a county road and bridge supervisor because you've got water in the county. And Looking at the terrain in your county, you have basically a flat table like this with a few occasional mounds of sand scattered around it. And it isn't going to drain. Mm -hmm. And those people, God love them, they built in a hole and then they irrigate it and they can't understand why the hole gets wet when it rains. And they want you folks to drain it. Well, it can be drained, but you're going to have a terrible outlay for fuel when you put those big pumps in. I don't know where you're going to pump it to. I suppose back to Revere <coughs> or someplace. It might play it. But it we've, we've run into a situation like this in Pawnee County. Not sure. And the Counting in the property orders. Yeah. I kind of understood the situation, but they went ahead and retained us for the and they were wasting the money. But they retained us to go out and do a full blown study on the thing. I think they spent a little over $30,000, and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what to do with the water, and just like they told me from day one, you can't drain a swamp when you've got nothing but flat land. Water will not run of itself over land without you just about need a 1% grade if you're going to make it go at all. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a paved street, you can get by with about 3 to 4 tenths percent grade. But even at that, you're looking at in a mile run anywhere from 20 to 50 foot deep on that ditch. But then when you get it a mile, what are you going to do with it? You've got to go another two or three miles to get it to any kind of a drainage. So now you're 300 foot in the ground, and you better have some big pumps to pump it up and get it in that stream line. And before you get that involved, you're going to get to the Division of Water Resources involved, which we've talked to uh, your gentleman over at, uh, at Stafford regarding these, and you don't have any clearly defined waterways. So they're of the opinion it's flat like a table, and there's no way you're going to go in there with any kind of ditches and channel the water out of it. So you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Now, our friend would be tickled to death to tell you, yeah, we'll go out and study the situation, but quite frankly, it'd be money thrown down the down the old tube. So you're saying that there's, the, there's no solution to the drainage problem then? You can put pipes in, you can equalize it, but you're not going to get it to go anywhere. You may get it to go from farmer A to farmer B, but then farmer B is going to say, well, hey, I didn't have this water now. What are you going to do with it? And about all you're going to do is run it in a circle until it wears out. It's got to be a short circle. So there is, I'm sorry, there's just no easy way to 
solve the problem. Do you have some comments, Mike? Well, to me, this the water runs to the east end of this section, and that road is just like a dam. As a matter of fact, the water gets so high, it runs over the top of the road. Okay. And it looks like, you know, if we had a culvert in there, I know that water would run. Well, what would run to, Mike? Well, couldn't it, couldn't it go from his place around and through Seward and on east? Where does it go when it goes over the top of the road? Goes on the other, the other side of the road, of course. And then it goes, goes south. When it equalizes out, what happens? Well, I suppose you know if it gets that wet, it just it finds a place to run finally. But I mean, we get. I had an agronomist there one time, and he figured we had forty acres of water or better out there. It just absolutely. It's just like a dam. Well, I can understand that, that the road itself would sort of act as a dam if you've got a little bit of sheet coming off of there, and it can't go on across the road. Uh, about the only thing you could do is just flatten that road out and make it the same elevation as the fields. That'd be fine with me. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm going to find the people want to get up and down that road. Yeah, but that ditch across the road east there, you could what? It, that ditch across the road east, it drains. It drains all the way through Seward on, on east. It goes east then to the highway and back to the creek or it has to end up somewhere. It comes on, it goes straight east and then it goes down through Gates' pasture over into that creek and then on down. Well, you could put a pipe under there and sort of equalize the water. It's going to fill up that east ditch and then if you want it to go anywhere, you're going to have to regrade that ditch. And like I say, you're looking at 20 to 50 feet in elevation that you're going to have to take out of the ditch to make it go anywhere. And once you do that, where's it going to go? It's just going to fill the ditch up and that's it. All this water runs east. That east ditch doesn't stand for water. It drains. Yes, because no water can get there. Right, but I mean, yeah. just natural rainfall, it drains. It drains all the way through Seward. Well, it drains down to that entrance, and then that's a plug entrance in there. Right, uh, now it is. Plug set, plug set. Uh, that, that entrance doesn't have a pipe in it. It used yeah, to, and uh, the co-op wide and the highway, there's a plug. No, on um, oh, um, set, Mike, straight across from you. Yeah, exactly. Straight across from yeah. you, Mike, that, yeah. that entrance right there. Yeah, he put that not, in. Does not have a pipe he in He put that in probably 30 years ago or so. But yeah, once it gets to the curve and, and yeah, everything. when it starts to east, it goes. Yeah, it everything, goes. everything flows. It flows to the east out around there. So you think if you put a pipe in that, this, what you're talking about there, that it'll go into sewer and go east? Yeah, if we had it uh, covered under the old blacktop, and uh, then there's that farm entrance, that would help me out there, you know, a lot. But is it going to run it on somebody else? I don't, well, see, I, I don't see how it could. I, I don't either. Well, if it gets too high in there in sewer, it will go back in, you know, in the sewer a little bit, I'm sure. I mean, of course, you can't go, of course by, if that, they, if you can't go by that 10 or 11 inch ring we had anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's true. You're not going to have that. <laughs> you know, well, you hope well, that. You know, yeah. if we get a couple inch rain up there, I've got big problems. And like I said, if they where the co-op widened that road, if they put a culvert in there, you know, because it just it backs up there too. You, did you say they plugged up the yeah, culvert? They, they widened. They put a twenty-foot driveway in with a ten-foot culvert, and they knew it at the time they done it. Oh, cool. On that turnaround. This is a turnaround for their trucks. It's right on the west end down there by the, on the west end by them steel bins. It's it's a first pipe. It's a first pipe on the west end of Seward where it come, where that water drains from the curve coming back to the east. So I'm talking back north. That's where we're at. That's where Mike's talking yeah. about. Okay. But they're talking about the drainage okay. after it gets around the corner there into Seward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
but from surgeons that go on then to the east and back in eventually uh, straight east. Well, it has to run that way then. If the water runs that way, you it can't. runs that way now. There's you can not, see with that cobra no plug drop, drop in the ditch. With that cobra there plug right now, it backs water clear up around the corner almost to Mike's because it's just dammed up. And when it gets high as a, the driveway, then it cuts through their parking lot and over past my place and Bob's place, goes a block east, and then it runs back into the ditch, and then it goes on east. They're diverting water right into sewer now with that driveway being plugged. When he had that 14 inch rain, there was water foot deep running past my place and down to the corner and then back into the ditch and then on east. But it will eventually go east, you're saying? Right, it goes east then. It goes right through Sir and down past Rogers and right on east. And that's a pretty good ditch going down that way. From Main Street and Sur on east, Range Pine. in that this will help my problem and not well, cause somebody else well, to have water that's just it. I, if you put that one in there and you, if you put the one the crossroad in up there where Mike's talking about that, that will drain his stuff right there by his mom just north of his mom's yeah. and then you'd have to put a pipe in the entrance on that into the pen sector yeah. and then that water that uh, go on around but the ditch has to be cleaned out of there in sewer, I'm sure. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Yeah. I mean... It's not going to have to be made real deep. Right? Well, sir, will, will sir clean the ditches out? Like, that probably helps a lot. But. Well, the thing is, like I told him, the county maintains that road going through, sir. How come they don't maintain the ditch? Isn't that on the road right away? It's in the city limits, we don't. City limits. Yeah, they, they fill potholes and everything going right through, sir. Well, basically, that's just a courtesy to you people because you don't have the equipment to do it for it. But that's not a county road? No, our plans stop at the city limit. And no, we've maintained it for years, yeah. I'm not going to disagree at that point. Yeah, we that's, made, that we was mine. We've maintained it, we've overlaid it, we've I mean, sealed it. the same it. thing as here in St. John and in Maxfield. I mean, it's, yeah. it comes to city limits and then that's it. But the county run survey going through town here, here a year ago, the survey. We should, we should, we made some shots going through there. Yes. The biggest problem going through there is that going past Bird's filling station. Yeah, yeah that's 180 feet of pipe. It's 180 feet of pipe. That's, that's the biggest problem going through town. And then one end is two foot lower than the other end. <laughs> and he's broke. Which is... I said, as far as I'm concerned, they ought to just put two short culverts in there, and if he wants to put in one longer later, he could do it. On his own expense. Huh? On his own expense, sir. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, See, when that culvert was put in there, the east end of that culvert, the bottom, of, uh, the top of it is lower than the bottom of the next culvert. It's in there just like it is. It was put in that way. And we did not put that pipe in. No, they done that. <laughs> no. <laughs> in fact, I talked to the guy that did put it in. He said, I put that sucker where it'll drain. Yeah, like that. <laughs> no, it's got a two foot drop in it. I know. Yeah. I, I do know what it has. The way it is now, there's no way it'll drain. Can't. Oh, I mean, it'll trickle through there, but. Well, I guess my concern was dumping this water in the sewer and then having something happen. Yeah, that's it. And then this water going on the end, and then whatever, we have problems there. It's all going to have to be fixed. There's no doubt about that. That was, that was my concern about putting the crossroad pipe in there and draining, and draining that on Mike and then putting this. But it won't drain on the east end, you're saying? It, it will. It will if that's fixed through sewer. But I'm, I'm reluctant to bring all that water into sewer because even, I mean, 
you get a big rain that fills that ditch up and then it goes, the pipe won't handle it, then it's all still going to go back in into where Fred was talking about. It's going to go in through that co-op parking lot and back in, into town there. I don't think we would have had near as much water when we had that big rain if that co-op culvert would have drained. Of course, that's not the only problem, but it sure don't help anything. I don't know how they got away with doing that. And I talked to the guy that done it, and they knew it. <laughs> it wasn't an accident. Because, see, they tried, when I talked to them, they tried to bring it on the garbage. When they had it, when well, I found the guy that done it, and it wasn't garbage; it was co-op. Well, that, that's that's in the city, right? Yeah. Well, can't the city council do something about it? Well, that? when I talked to Frank Riedel, he said, "Well, we're going to wait and see what the county does, because see, they've done that surveying in there." It's the cities. It looks to me like we need to start downstream and work up. Yeah. Oh, was that <coughs> and. But here lies the problem. You got work. You can't ever get any everybody to work together yeah. on this. Well, it seems like nothing ever gets done. The only problem with the city is we don't have much money. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how much money we're talking about. The biggest expense is going by that station. But like I say, I I can't speak for the council, but as far as I'm concerned, there'll just be two cores put in there. And you know, me and Mike was looking too, and then. Them pumps are damn near sticking out on the right of way. They stick way out there. That cover can't, I don't know, you know more about it than I do out there surveyed it, but that cover can't be very far from them pumps, is it? I don't remember. Did you ever notice that, that top, though? Top they top stick way head. out. I don't know off the top of my head, Fred. I'm not even going to venture, I guess. Well, we just, yeah. sometime when you drive down there, just for curious, they just look, and boy, they, they really stick out there, because then, so that cover can't be very far from them pumps. And the problem, as I remember, is you can't get much of a culvert in there and have any cover over the top of it. No, I do believe that's right, because I think that's just a 20-inch pipe in there. And that's an awful lot of water to drain through a 20 inch pipe that far. Yeah. So it's going to be very slow getting out of there if, yeah. it, if it'll go. I told Mr. Nusser earlier that I know we're in North Seward Township, east of uh, the highway, east of 281, that uh, there's a place they was having trouble with water and they.